Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, building coherence across disciplines, exploring teacher candidates, integration of science and literacy. I'm Grace King and I teach um, in TCH um, and we'll be talking about our um, some of our URG um, research. I'm Anna Arias and I also teach um, in the School of Teaching and Learning um, and so we'll get started by first telling you a little bit about our um, our problem space. So we know that teaching science and literacy together is a really important work. We know that it can support elementary students to make sense of natural phenomena and to understand more about the world around them, that it can support students' abilities to engage in both literacy and science practices, um, and that it can support deeper understanding of the concepts, both in science and in literacy. Um, yet we know that um, this type of learning is atypical in, U in U.S. classrooms, that um, pretty regularly students don't get the opportunity to really engage meaningfully in literacy and science practices integrated together in meaningful ways. And so why is this atypical? Well, we know that elementary teachers can develop the abilities to integrate science and literacy, yet elementary teachers and elementary teacher candidates, those preparing to be teachers, face many challenges in learning to do this work. First of all, they're expected to be experts across multiple different subject areas and disciplines. They have to know how to teach mathematics and all about mathematics. They have to know all about literacy and how to teach literacy. They have to know all about science and how to teach science. They have to know all about social studies and how to teach social studies. It's a lot for them to learn. Um, we also know that they're often missing, missing opportunities to learn within each of these disciplines and across disciplines. Um, often they're missing opportunities to make those connections across spaces. Um, and also, often our pre-service teachers are um, facing discordances across the emphasis and priorities across settings. Um, that, so this might be differences in what they're, being, they're seeing when they're in the field and in the classroom, but also across different courses within um, teacher education programs. So knowing these challenges, we wondered how we can support coherence between literacy and science methods courses to integrate teacher candidates to integrate science and literacy. So with this question, we have a set of research questions. Um, so looking across all our assignments um, from teacher candidates we, that they were enrolled in, um, in, their, in the senior block, um, we looked within their literacy and science methods courses. And our qu questions were, uh, what types and qualities of text, tools, and supports do the teacher candidates plan to use within these lessons to support students in using these practices to make sense of disciplinary core ideas and cross-cutting concepts? And what are the similarities and differences across the lesson plans from the two different courses and also across the two different years that we had um, collected data. So the theoretical framework that it um, really informs our, our work um, is uh, really stems from a sociocultural approach and looking from uh, Vygotsky, um, learning how it um, involves sense making with others and how it's um, really learning from with with um, from each other and it's social and the integration of science and literacy can facilitate sense making across contexts through building on students funds of knowledge um, and really looking at um, how this idea of learning is social and distributed and situated in a particular context um, and coherence across contexts with within teacher education can really support teacher learning. Our methodology is a qualitative case study approach and um, we um, worked with 42 pre-service elementary teachers that were enrolled in um, the literacy and science method courses um, in a teacher education program and the data sources included lesson plans assignments and surveys from teacher candidates and really also our instructor notes reflections and class materials and it spanned um, from two years and two cohorts of teacher candidates from um, two separate iterations of the course our context is a elementary teacher education program and it was during their senior block and the two courses that we are looking um, to build coherence across was the, the language arts instructional strategies methods course and their elementary science methods course. Um, so as we um, taught both of these courses, we were really looking to plan, teach and reflect on reform based um, in investigative lessons. We also um, were looking to develop abilities to use resources and tools to grow as teachers for, for our teacher candidates. 
Our vision really stems across um, looking um, at building coherence across our courses and um, having similar understandings of how learning happens in elementary classrooms. So um, in that second part of our vision, we really saw how the benefits of integrating science and literacy um, for, our, for our teacher candidates and supporting student sense making across contexts and again drawing on students' funds of knowledge and um, how science requires the use of literacy practices and metacognition. So um, to start our work of our analysis, we just began with an initial set of coding of, of the lesson plans that we collected across these two different cohorts. We first were just looking at how were they thinking about planning for science, particularly looking at their engagement in the science practices that come from the next generation science standards. These include asking questions, planning investigations, obtaining communicating information. Um, we were also looking at what literacy domains they were planning for for the students, including reading, writing, and speaking what kind of text the pre-service teachers were planning to use within these lessons, and then what types of scaffolding they were planning to support their students and when they were using um, these different texts or engaging in these different practices. Things like modeling, using a sentence stem, um, probing questions, graphic organizers, um, other pieces of that work that might allow, um, allow it support um, elementary students to be able to really think and make sense of the natural phenomenon, the work that they were look, working on in their particular classes. From this initial coding scheme, um, we've gone on to develop a set of case studies um, to kind of look more deeply at what was going on across a couple across our courses for um, some students who really focused in on science and literacy across our two uh, course sections. So I'm just going to give you some findings that we found already, give you some examples from our case studies from year one, so two different case studies and some of the comparison across those two case studies. Um, and then we'll talk about the changes that we made between year one and year two of our two courses. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, the year two case study as well. So <clears throat> this is a case study from, um, from year one, and this is case study pair one, Karen and David. Um, they both had to write a literacy lesson that was part of their integrated uh, unit in the literacy course and then a science lesson and the science lesson that they chose to focus on was animal adaptations to habitats. Um, and these two lessons were really both focused on kind of habitats and how students live in ha and how animals live in habitats and adapt to those. But you'll notice that they're using really different strategies and not really making connections across the strategies that they're using for science and, and literacy across the two spaces. So in the literacy unit lesson, they modeled how to summarize a book. Um, and then they had students go to stations where they were um, summarizing um, different texts about this particular, about books or about kind of making sense of uh, thinking about how how habitats are different across different spaces. Uh, however, when they were doing this book of this work of summarizing a book, they weren't really supporting students to kind of then make sense of what is a model ecosystem and how do things live in that model ecosystem. It was really about the ability to summarize without thinking kind of about the science idea. So they were engaging in some of the science practice of obtain, obtaining information, and they were engaged in reading and speaking in this lesson. They were engaging students in reading and speaking in this lesson, but they weren't necessarily really helping students to then make sense of phenomenon and kind of use evidence and things like that to do that work. Whereas in their science lesson, um, they had students make ob observations of the animal structures and hypothesize about why the structures matter. Um, they had students then present their ideas about those animal adaptations and really push them to use to claim supported with evidence to do that work and just discuss similarities and differences across those spaces and then kind of end with a, with a summarizing discussion of adaptation. Um, so in this case, they were really supporting students to make sense of those animal structures and strategies um, and they were, were engaging students in making observations and analyzing data and explanation. Um, the students were able to speak and write, but they weren't they didn't necessarily use any of the strategies or supports that they had from literacy to do this work. So um, there wasn't really any of the scaffolding or modeling of how to summarize or how to make how to make a claim that was included in those spaces that they had done in the literacy um, text. So they were having students make sense of the natural phenomenon, but not necessarily drawing on some of the supports that might exist. They also didn't really incorporate any other texts to help the students work through or think through those pieces that might really support them in even broadening their understanding of that space. So this is case study two. This is Allison and Meredith. Um, and they had two separate topics, two really different topics that they focused on. So in their literacy course, the lesson that they wrote about, they were comparing 
contrasting aquatic marine ecosystems. And in science, they were comparing and contrasting chemical physical change. So two different topics, um, but something that we noticed about Allison and Meredith that while the topics were really different, they were using similar strategies and calling, kind of pulling strategies across the two spaces to support students learning um, and, and working towards both helping them develop their skills and abilities in literacy as well as helping them develop an, an understanding of how to conduct investigations and how to um, <clears throat> make sense of phenomenon that was a focus of the science. Um, so in both cases, um, they're reading a picture book or kind of reviewing in changes that they'd written before as their first step in both the literacy and science unit. Um, the students then had an opportunity to make observations in both of the lessons. And then they both did this compare and contrast work where they used a Venn diagram um, <coughs> or a different graphic organizer to really help students make sense of what they had observed and worked their way through. Um, so what we were able to see in Meredith and Allison's lesson is that they were pulling some of these strategies across these two spaces. So while they were different topics, they were thinking about drawing on some of the supports that they learned in both of the two courses. And so when we compare these two cases, um, we see that in David and Karen's lesson, the literacy focused on aspects of literacy strategies, the science focused on making sense of phenomenon, uh, whereas in Allison and Meredith's lessons, both the literacy and science provided a chance to make sense of phenomenon. Um, and to make comparisons about what was going on, as well as to use some different literacy strategies in that space as well. Um, in, um, <laughs> in, their, in their science lesson, they didn't necessarily get to the how and why of the phenomenon that showed up in David and Karen's lesson, but they were certainly working on some of those things. Um, so we saw in David and Karen's lesson over at the bottom, like they, they had little crossover of the structures or supports between the two lessons, whereas in Allison and Meredith's lesson, there's really similar structure and support across these lessons. All right, some ideas from our initial analysis. Um, we um, looked at some of the strengths to build on for coherence, uh, really thinking through using multiple science practices and areas of literacy across the courses, um, and using multiple texts and tools across the courses, and potential for using similar, similarly structured and supported lessons. Um, and areas for growth in terms of coherence, um, recognizing the benefits of integrating science and literacy uh, to make sense of phenomenon, and we could really see how um, some of within the two case studies when um, Allison and Meredith's lesson they were doing uh, that where they were able to uh, draw from the different literacy strategies into science and also the, the various um, um, strategies that they are using in science in their literacy lesson as well um, working towards student sense making of natural phenomena and science ideas within literacy lessons and using scaffolding strategies and text from literacy within the science lesson. So a lot of crossover and um, ways that they um, were making sense of science material as well as using some of those literacy strategies. Um, so as we look forward, reimagining purposefully making connections, um, rescheduling the courses and readings intentionally, and building on science and literacy readings in both um, courses. And so as we looked at our courses, we really thought through um, what were areas that we wanted to highlight in both science and as well as in literacy, and just having understanding and knowledge of what was taking place in both of those courses at, at, the, at the same time. Um, and also building on the literacy interactive read aloud in science and so this is one of the main um, assignments within uh, liter the literacy block and how um, also in science um, there was a, a mutual understanding and um, support that was being um, developed as well as um, a resource for the students in science just as if just as in the literacy course um, expectations for assignments and using similar language I think the language that we used um, because it was similar it was helpful for the students to see um, that both of us understood um, had similar expectations and understanding of what we were, what we were talking about and discussing in both courses in the year two case study um, within this integrated unit, um, there were some noticeable differences that we saw um, from the year one case studies um, that there, there was a focus on human impacts on their environment to build on students' knowledge and relevance to students' lives. And so we really wanted to have more of a socio-political emphasis and having students think outside of um, 
just themselves and seeing how these lessons could impact um, society at large. And these lessons um, in, in this student's um, integrated unit focused on um, an interactive read aloud about natural resources to determine importance of text and, and also using text to apply a, um, writing about human impacts on the environment on determining importance and questioning, being comparison um, across two contexts and text to discuss conversation of natural resources, um, synthesizing information about human impacts and natural resources to focus on water pollution. And so there was a lot of different um, reading strategies that, um, deep reading strategies that were being used um, on science uh, material and science content. Um, and then there was a water filtration investigation lesson and also using um, a nonfiction fiction article to summarize understandings from the unit. Um, and the final assessment for this integrated unit was to create a picture book about human impact on the environment. So if we see um, this year two case study lesson, um, you can see um, some of the differences that happened when we added that um, language and some of that supports from, uh, from making decisions about how to include things together um, and talk across our two courses. So um, in this lesson, there was um, an initial discussion and synthesis of books that they'd already read about water pollution that they'd been reading um, across the units that they'd already had. They had students pulling their eyes ideas, ideas together and sharing them with a graphic organizer called a KWL chart. Um, then students had this opportunity to engage in an investigation and reflect on the design of their of a water filter. And then finally, they were getting a chance to write um, claims with evidence about the space. So they were making sense of what a water filtration is, but they were also using those texts and that language that they were using before. So of our conclusions, um, we uh, felt that the case studies showed variation, strengths, and areas for growth and how the teacher candidates were using science and literacy practices to support students in making sense of the natural phenomena. And these areas highlight the need for coherent support across the methods courses um, in terms of the purpose and potential of integrating science and literacy, um, strategies for using text within science, and sense making of science ideas. And lastly, um, the analysis of teacher candidates' work shows potential for developing coherence across courses and improvement in teacher educators practice. Um, so we're really thinking about some implications of our work. So we're seeing that there's strengths um, to build on for coherence across literacy and science. Um, that thinking about using multiple science practices in areas of literacy across our two courses can really help our pre-service teachers think about how to do this work of in integrating science and literacy um, in their own lessons. That we can encourage them to use multiple texts and different tools, um, and that we can encourage this use across both courses as well. Um, and that there's a potential for using similarly structured and supported lessons. So really kind of thinking about if we used the same, as we use the same supports in our second year and use similar structures in terms of just the lesson plan template, that this helped our pre-service teachers be able to think about how to do this work in a way that felt less um, had less discordance for them in the work that they were doing. Um, we're also thinking about other areas of growth for coherence across science and literacy. Um, that I think as we kind of uh, worked through this space and we worked with our pre-service teachers, we learned that there were some new areas to build on and to work through. One was that um, the science practices of explanation and argumentation really require these literacy practices and skills in a way that we can we can talk about and build on those. That these are major emphasis in science, um, but without um, literacy skills and abilities, you really can't do this work in meaningful ways. Um, that we can really think about working towards sense-making of natural phenomenon um, within, within literacy as well as working on that in science. That that's a space for us to work across spaces to do that work. Um, and that um, using some of those scaffolding strategies, especially as our pre-service teachers are developing those in literacy and bringing those into science are really meaningful. That, um, noting and naming the scaffolding tools that our pre-service teachers have already learned how to use, but that they can use them in science lessons in ways that work, can help students similarly and can help them develop their understanding is really meaningful for our pre-service teachers. So looking ahead, some of our future research questions are um, how might coherence across methods courses support teacher candidates to plan for engaging students in science and literacy method practices to make sense of natural phenomena. So as our teacher candidates are um, preparing to plan for uh, various science and literacy um, lessons and within those lessons to have practices that really make sense of this natural phenomena. So, um, and also how might teacher educators make obvious the differences and similarities between science learning and literacy learning um, as we 
uh, both note that teaching science and teaching literacy is very different. And so making that obvious and making those distinctions clear to our students, but then also helping them to recognize some of the similarities uh, between the two as well. Those are our references. And we would like to say thank you. If you want more information about any of this work, please feel free to email either one of us. Thank you.